Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, so that means it's Rocks in a Box Day. And this week I kind of lied in the title a little bit because these rocks haven't actually gotten into a box yet. These are fresh out of the tumbler. Actually they came out like last week and I dumped them out in this towel and I had to go somewhere so I didn't really get a chance to look at them then and I really haven't looked through them very carefully. I, I glanced at them briefly but not much. So we'll look through them together. Haven't even separated them from the ceramics yet. So still got all the little ceramic pieces that go in the lotto tumbler with these. So let me pull the camera a little bit closer and we'll take a look. I end up removing these ceramics from these because as soon as I dumped them off the towel, the ceramics started rolling all over the place. So uh, they'll be ceramic free from here on out. Uh, one of the things you might have noticed right away is that there are crosses in this batch. Uh, I did, I don't remember how many, a dozen or so. So these are all self-collected rocks that I cut into crosses. If you've never seen that video, uh, I'll put a link up on the top and in the description so you can go check it out. So most of these are uh, quartz, like that's the real white quartz I find sometimes both here in uh, Lake Huron and also up in Lake Superior. Uh, this is, I always call it quartzite. Um, not sure that's perfectly right or not. Uh, that's some so quartz also. That's unikite or quartzite. I'm not 100% sure what the difference between quartz and quartzite is. Is that all the crosses? Oh, there's another unikite one. Two a little bit different unikites there. Different colors. I'm in trouble holding them all in my hand. Uh, so, you know, you might notice that there's not too much variety in the rocks. That's because I'll cut a slab, uh, several slabs out of a rock, and they just happen to be next to each other in the box. And sometimes I can get two or three crosses out of one slab. But, you know, there's the crosses from the batch. And I have a turtle. I cut out. If you've seen my little Toski stone turtles, or sometimes I put other kinds of rocks on top, but this is the bottom part, and then the shell is a separate part. Uh, those take a long time. Crosses are pretty quick to cut out, and cut crosses pretty fast. Uh, but these take a long time getting the blade in all those little corners. The problem is you can't just cut around there. I'm using uh, basically a table saw. Is what the like a, a table saw for wood, except this is for stone. Uh, and you gotta put the end of the blade in there and kind of work it back and forth, and it's these are sort of a pain. Anyhow, got that. And then there's some guitar picks in here. Uh, that's Brazilian agate. That's Brazilian agate. I had four. Oh, there's another little cross. Not sure what that is. Uh, sometimes I make them out of Montana agate. That might be Montana, but I'm not at all sure of that. And I guess we'll have to be surprised with what the other one is later. It's in here somewhere. All right. Uh, this is, I believe, coral from either Florida or Georgia. That's a Botswana agate. That was in a, I, I've shown you the box of Botswana agates I had before, and this was in that batch, but it had a bad spot in it. I think it was right in here. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, grinding out very nicely. So I put it on the grinder and, and fixed it up, but it was sitting over by my grinder for a long time, because every time I do something else, I'd forget to do this one. So I finally remember to fix it up and threw it in with this batch. So this rock will go in that box with all the other Botswana agates. So some of these get separated out and put in other boxes. So as you're seeing these boxes from past batches, uh, sometimes you're seeing a batch that was all tumbled together. Sometimes a box wasn't full, so I th I'll throw you know some from another batch into a box just to fill it up. Uh, sometimes I organize them by types of rock, sometimes I don't. This is another piece of that coral from Florida or Georgia. That's the outside crust, and then that's the inside. I did a whole box of this once, if you saw it, but I love when I leave the crust on there. Sometimes I get carried away and tumble it away. No idea what that is. I also don't know what this is. I had some of this in another batch recently. It's pretty cool, but I don't know what it is. Shines up nice. It almost looks like it's undercut there. Some rocks look speckled like that when they have soft spots, but those aren't soft spots. Those are just speckles in the rock. Really cool rock. Uh, what's this one? I don't know what that is, and I wasn't expecting it to turn out this good. I don't know. Something about it just made me think it wasn't going to tumble very well, but wow, that's cool. Those pieces, those parts in between there are 
kind of translucent, or are translucent. I guess you'd call that brushiated, but I don't know what it is other than that. All right, so you get the good along with the bad. Uh, this isn't real bad, but this is an example of a rock that undercut. So right in here and over here, these kind of gray parts, brownish gray, uh, those were a softer mineral than the other stuff, and you can see they're worn in a little bit deeper, plus they don't polish up because softer rocks are harder to polish. This might be a thunder egg, part of a thunder egg, I'm not really sure. Not bad, it's still a cool rock, but um, that's undercutting right there. Not sure what that is, that might be a piece of that coral, but I'm not at all sure of that. See through that one. This kind of looks like a Montana agate, but I know uh, a guy I know from a rock tumbling hobby forum, the name of a website uh, named James. He went on a rock hunt in Texas and he picked up these rocks that looked a lot like Montana agate, but weren't. And since some of his corals in here, this might be from him also, I'm not really sure. Uh, might just be a Montana agate, but uh, I think there's a rock in Texas that looks quite a bit like Montana agate. Uh, this, I've been tumbling a lot of this lately. Um, I had some in a box I, I uh, somebody gave me from that rock tumbling hobby site, uh, Mark. And it's called Gary Green or Larsenite. And it's from Oregon, I believe. And I have several pieces of it. Um, I'm aware of this because this stuff's been driving me crazy. It looks really cool here. I'm very happy with how these turned out. Uh, they've got a good shine on them. They look great, uh, great pattern. But they tend to have soft spots in them. So there'll be these veins of a, a softer mineral in there. Uh, that's kind of porous and it's just it, like that other stuff it's going to undercut or actually leave holes behind. Uh, so it's a frustrating material but if you can find good the good parts of it it's really pretty. Looks like we got an agate of some sort here with some water level banding there. Had a few scraps of this in, in one batch I was tumbling. Um, it's kind of got separated into different lotto loads. I don't know what that is, but it's kind of neat. It's a piece of crazy lace of some sort. You gotta love crazy lace. Man, that's cool. And what else we have? Got this brown rock. And... Here's a piece of jasper of some sort. It's like some sort of a picture jasper. Can I see another piece of that floating around here? Maybe not. Here's another piece of that coral. This is a little slab. And come on camera, you can focus. I know it's that coral because the outer crust of that coral looks like that. And then the inside part usually looks like that. It's nice, but I don't know what it is. Here's another one that didn't turn out all that great. I believe that's a type of feldspar. I don't know what kind of feldspar. Uh, you see it's got cracks in it. Uh, it's got these cleavage planes. Yeah, it's definitely feldspar. I don't know if you can see that effect there, but it has these, on these planes, it has kind of this glimmer to it sometimes. I don't know if you can see, you can kind of see it in here. Look at that when I move it back and forth. See that? But it tends to crack along those planes, so uh, it didn't get very shiny and, you know, kind of a blah rock. Spent too much time looking at it. Here's another one of these things. We looked at another one of these a minute ago. Oh, here's a little piece of Turatella. That's how you pronounce it, agate. 
which isn't really an agate. I think that's, yeah, that's what that is. Any more of it in here? Looks like just that one little piece. Anyhow, some sort of a little fossil. Oh, here's the other guitar pick. I don't know what kind of rock that is. It's another one that's got some undercutting in it. It's kind of how great, it might be a type of granite. That's kind of how granite turns out. Not thrilled with that piece. Piece of quartz. More of that Gary Green, I think. Ooh. That's another piece of that coral. It's really nice. I like that. we look at this one? I might have looked at that one. I think we already saw this. Yeah, well, it's nice. We'll look at it again. Okay. Almost looks like mica in this one. I don't think it is mica because mica wouldn't have lasted, but it's a little crystally looking things there. Glinting in the light. All right, we'll look at the rest all together. Oh, there's one that's worth looking at. And there's the rest of them. All right. Tune in next week for the next episode of Rocks in a Box.